continue with the lighting of the Christ candle. Welcome home. This night, this night is a night to remember. A night when home broke in on us. A night when we were not forgotten or alone or abandoned. This night. This night is a night when here and there became one. When past and present combined in a breathless present. This is a night when we are home in ourselves, in this family, in the God who loved us enough to walk with us. We gather in the night to proclaim the light. We shrug off despair and we embrace hope. We set aside conflict and we choose peace. We push away despair by claiming joy. We overcome hate by rising into love. Because this night we know, even in the shadow of our doubts, we know that we are loved. That's what it means to be home. We light these candles hoping to become the light, hoping to radiate light by how we live. We light these candles to create a space called home in this place, our place, in our inner places. We light these candles to declare that unto us a Savior is born, who is Christ the Lord. Welcomed home by angels singing and shepherds kneeling. Welcomed home by those like us who have worshipped for thousands of years. Welcomed home again tonight, right here, right now, in us. It's time to be home. Continue with the call to worship. Rejoice! I bring good news for all people. Unto us a child is born. Alleluia. Tonight the angels sing on earth, glory to God in the highest. I am now invite you to rise as you are able and sing, O come, all ye faithful.
Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He is the light no darkness can overcome. At darkest night, we gather to celebrate the great light of our salvation. With heavenly hosts, we sing glory to God in the highest heaven. In Christ, God's word is made flesh and lives among us. With the shepherds, we will tell of the wonders we have seen and heard. We will now sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. of a stable. Your radiant light shines forth in a tiny baby wrapped in rags. Such humble love astounds us. In Jesus you have become one with us that we might become one with you. Open our hearts to joyfully receive his love that he may be born in us and we in him. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with our readings of scripture. from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually 
and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We will sing together joy to the world. second reading this evening comes from Titus, chapter 2. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Good Christians, friends, rejoice.
third reading this evening comes from Luke chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. verses 8 to 20. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, and it had been told them.
like tonight to sing lots of Christmas carols, to hear the Christmas story, to pray, to bless. And so we gather this night with lots of hymns and lots of singing. But imagine if you would, um, someone comes to church for the first time ever on Christmas Eve. And here's the Christmas Eve hymns that we sing every year. Do you think they would get the whole story of Christmas Eve? Do you think they would be able to understand the depth of love that Jesus has for us? Think about it. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. That hymn uh, describes a lot about human reproduction. <laughs> Talks about a virgin, stories of birth, and then a second birth. In fact, the Prince of Peace may not have even been born human because in that hymn, he is born with healing in his wings. So is he a bird? What is he? A way in a manger is another one. It is full of cha uh, changing language. Things that, uh, if, you, if you look at the whole thing, sort of don't fit together. It talks about using a manger because there was no crib for a bed. And then by the end, we are actually asking God to watch over the crib which we just said wasn't there. The hymn Angels We Have Heard on High is so vague, it almost says nothing. With talks of plains and mountains singing to each other, or perhaps not even singing, but straining, echoing their joyous strains. We just sang, right? And then this glow, the longest Gloria ever in a hymn, in Excelsius Deo, right? So what does that mean? What would that say to somebody who is listening to this story for the first time? Well, glory in Excelsius Deo is Latin for glory to God in the highest. And it comes from Luke 2, verse 14, which Brenda just read to us. When the heavenly army appeared and the angels praying God, praising God, saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among people, with whom he is pleased. But you don't automatically connect that verse to that story. But that's where it comes from. What about joy to the world? We cannot go through a Christmas Eve service without singing joy to the world. But listen now to the words of this hymn and think about that first time worship. No more let sin or sorrow grow, nor thorns invest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found. So, it, with those words, it doesn't really uh, say a lot of good stuff about the story, right? It's sort of a, a negative uh, verse, maybe, um, a hard one to listen to and a hard one to even tackle as the theology of it. What about uh, this one, hearing these words uh, in the Christmas hymn for the first time? And you beneath life's crushing load, whose forms are bending low, with toil along the climbing way with painful steps and slow? Look now, for God and golden hours come swiftly on the wing, will rest beside the weary road and hear the angel sing. Again, sort of those uh, crushing load and weary road, they sound pretty heavy for Christmas Eve, but yet these hymns are our beloved hymns that we need to hear every year. They play such an important role in the feel of Christmas Eve service, and this year with us not really being able to be together, to hear these uh, hymns hopefully brings you some comfort and reminds you of the community that you are a part of in your church. I can't imagine a Christmas Eve without singing Silent Night, but again, if you listen to that hymn, uh, which we will be singing later, it isn't a play-by-play -play telling of the story, but there's probably no better hymn that sets a tone for us uh, on Christmas Eve, right? Silent Night, Holy Night, Love of God, Love's Pure Light, Radiant streams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Again, these words are comforting and they make us feel good, but they don't really uh, tell too much of the story. It's more of a nuance rather than the actual story. 
Our hands tonight really focus on the stable, which we have out here present, the manger, the virgin birth, the shepherds, the wise men, and even the animals. They help to create the special feeling that we long for on Christmas Eve. They make us feel good and feel at peace. The part of the story these hymns miss is the sheer life-changing, life-altering part of the story. We sing about this beautiful little baby sleeping peacefully, but, and they do the best they can to remind us of this beautiful night. What they don't tell us is that this day changes everything. This is the true hope for the world which is in the manger. In this manger is the promise of eternal life, of love, of grace. I think sometimes we need to throw in like a grunge song. I don't know if she sure can play that or not, but it really, you know, uh, maybe a, a headbanging song or something like that during our Christmas Eve liturgy to kind of jar us into the reality that this thing we celebrate tonight is big. We are not just here tonight to see a little baby, a cute little baby in a manger, but we are here to worship the king of the world. The angel king with the crowns and wings, who is the light. This king brings hope to a world filled with darkness. Every day it seems we are bombarded, especially during this time of COVID, with harsh news and, and fear because the numbers are rising all the time. But tonight we celebrate hope. Tonight, this Jesus that comes to us as a babe in a manger, he brings joy and unconditional love for all of you, so much so that he would die on a cross for you. This king that we celebrate tonight brings love, an unfailing love that is always there for us, tonight and every other night of the year. Each of us will feel some, uh, or experience some bad things this year, uh, diagnoses of illnesses, Certainly COVID will be part of your world in 2022, unfortunately, as well. Uh, maybe you'll get a, a bad Twitter review or something like that. You, I wish you wouldn't have to experience some bad stuff this year, but I know that everybody will be experiencing something. So hopefully you can return to this night. These songs that enter into our hearts and the feeling of love and peace and joy and hope that we highlighted through Advent and uh, capitalize on tonight, those feelings of God promising to you love, peace, joy, and hope through this baby in the baby. Not one of our songs tonight tell the whole story. This sermon can't tell the whole story either. As hard as I may try, this story is much bigger than one night. Getting to know this baby who comes to us tonight in a manger, in a stable in Bethlehem, will fill in some of the blanks. When the hymns, the readings, the candles, and the prayers are weaved together, the end result is a beautiful Christmas Eve service that could fill you up as full as you can be, that can sustain you in the days and weeks to come. Like the hymns sung by themselves, they only tell part of the story, so too it is with Christ's family. It is why we come together here on this night. It is the reason why we have different readers and different musicians. Not one person does the job because it is a job for everyone. The gospel that is proclaimed here is not complete. It needs you to be a part of the gospel. Together the songs make a glorious statement of who Christ is and what Jesus does for us and how we feel as we celebrate his birth. The end of our service, of course, we always finish with two hymns, at least uh, if I have a part of the service, these are the two hymns we finish with. The first one, of course, is Silent Night. Again, it sure doesn't tell the whole story, but my goodness, it sets the mood in a most beautiful way, uh, with candles lit. You can scarcely find another time in the whole of the year that brings such pure joy and peace and recreates that spirit of love on earth. But 
it's not a complete story either. The last hymn that we sing is uh, Go Tell It on the Mountain. What we need to do is come and or watch this service tonight, feel those feelings of peace and joy and love when we sing Silent Night, but then our work begins to go tell it on the mountain. That is what we have to do. That is part of the story. That we might be so filled with Christ this night, or any time we worship, or in other places in our life, that we would be compelled to go forth and to tell Christ's story. The complete story, the whole story, as much as you know. To be ready to hear more, hear it differently, hear it from someone else. Be able to share this story of God's love for all of humanity. You're living in a world that needs to hear this story. Jesus Christ is born and brings hope, love, peace, and joy to a hurting world. By the end of the service, after all the hymns are sung and all of the love is poured out in community, then we are ready to go out into the hurting world and be a light for Christ. A light that shines through the darkness to live out our baptismal promise. Do you remember it? Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father. That is what we are called to do. To go forth and be a light in the world. May the light of Christ shine in you today and every day going forward so that you can go and tell it from the mountains. Amen. We're going to sing again the first note.
The peace of Christ be with you always. And the share of signs without touching each other. <laughs> Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, buddy. Peace be with you. continue with our offering and our offering prayer. God of every good and perfect gift, in this season when so many gifts are given and received, we pray that you will receive the gifts we offer now. Use them according to your purposes and plans, bringing your good news of great joy to all people through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. We are now saying, what child is this? If you want to rise to this one, we have to take a while. <laughs> continue with our prayer. God of glory, by your grace a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests on his shoulders, and in his name we pray. Wonderful counselor, we pray for wisdom for the world's leaders, that they may use their power to lift burdens and break the bonds of oppression. Mighty God, we pray for the Church of Jesus Christ our Lord, that you will multiply and increase our joy as we share in the harvest you have gathered. Everlasting Father, we pray for families, friends, and loved ones, that those who now walk in deep darkness may see the great light of your saving love. Prince of Peace, we pray for an end to violence and warfare, as your authority may continue to grow until there is endless peace in every man. Lord of Hosts, establish your holy realm with justice and righteousness, from this time on and forevermore. Amen.
nothing much, God's holy child was born. Welcome the light. By the faint light of the moon, Mary and Joseph found their way. Welcome the light. Shown by courtyard fire, the open stable door. Welcome the light. Warm breath of resting bent beasts, kindly sparkling in their eyes. Welcome the light. In the shadowy stable stall, Joseph kindled a lamp. Welcome the light. There Mary gave birth to Jesus, called God with us. Welcome the light. Angels opened the doors of heaven, saying, Glory to God in the heights. Welcome the light. Shepherds saw the sky ablaze, left their sheep, and came to see. Welcome the light. In the darkest winter night, God set a brilliant star. Welcome the light. Magi from the east, divined God's shining sun. Welcome the light. And on this Christmas night, with joy, we greet the child. Welcome the light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being, in Him was life. And the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth.
Oh.